title is In Young Kim. As this hamburger's weren't bad enough, In Young Kim was now being subjected to a thin, triangular piece of bread covered with melted cheese and tomato sauce. She picked it up like the way she'd seen her husband do it, folded in half by the crust. But she hadn't counted on the orange-colored oil dripping off the crease, popping onto the paper plate. Her kids had called it pizza, an unpronounceable word. The best she could do was pija, because there was no such sound as z in Korean. But this is not important. When it came to food, only one aspect mattered, and this particular dish tasted greasy and salty and just plain awful. If only she could chase each fatty bite with a mouthful of kimchi, but that wasn't a possibility. In Young placed a slice back on the plate, and as if alive, the piece slowly unfurled back to its original flatness. Her husband said they couldn't eat kimchi at the store because it stunk. Americans found the smell unappetizing, though nothing disgusted in Young more than to walk by the cheese aisle in the supermarket. How anyone ate something so rank and continued to live was anybody's guess. Usually she brought discreet Korean meals from home to the store, but the little refrigerator in the stock room was broken. She was stuck with it disagreeable American meals for one more day. Her husband would drive into the city tomorrow and return with another fridge, probably used in need of cleaning, as long as it worked in young didn't care. Hi, a male voice said up from above. She was sitting at the front counter where her husband usually sat because he had taken the kids for ice cream. He promised they'd be back in 15 minutes, so if anybody asked anything she didn't understand, she was to tell them to wait. Before leaving, her husband had made her say the usual phrase to make sure she remembered it. Fifteen minutes, please. She had begrudgingly repeated for it. It seemed like a silly thing to do, but now, looking at the people in front of her, a man and a woman who were about to say words that meant nothing to her, she was glad he made her practice. Hello, she replied. She thought she'd seen the man before, and his white shirt and pants and dirty apron provided confirmation. He was the chef at the restaurant where her husband and Mr. Hong met for their Saturday lunches. The last time she'd seen him, which was maybe a couple of weeks ago, he had started to grow a beard, and now it was a big, bushy thing. He was a large man to begin with, and the beard somehow made him appear even larger. I'm Jake, he said, offering his hand. Home Town Grill? This is Martha, my wife. Yes, In Young said. I need your help, he said, then scratched his beard. Tiny follicles fell from his cheeks, and as In Young tracked her to set down on the counter, she caught his wife watching, too, in her obvious disdain. When Martha turned away, In Young noticed she was pregnant, very pregnant, probably eight months. I'm looking for a lantern, Jake said. Kind of a small one, about yay big. He gestured an open circle with his huge hand, but Inya remained clueless as to what he wanted. Yet, instead of uttering the rehearsed phrase that asked the customer to wait the few minutes for her husband's return, she found herself wanting to help this couple. Maybe help herself, too. She was going to have to learn this language if she wanted to make her life here. And the only way to do that was to just do it. Lantern, Martha said, also gesturing a circular object. Lantern, In Young said. I don't know Lantern. Oh, Jake said. Gee. Over there, Martha said, pointing at the back right corner of the shop. There were a few round shaped objects there, but the one that stuck out was a threesome of lighted orbs hanging in a line off the from afar, they looked like flawless spheres of light, but standing directly below them broke their smooth illusion. The lanterns were actually made of many thin aluminum rings, glued half an inch apart to the inner curved surface of the rice paper. 
A green sticker stuck at the bottom of each recorded their sign. 12, 24, and 36 inches. That's it. But 12 is what we need. Jake said. 12 numbers. Okay, and Young said. This was a part of the store she didn't know well, but she'd seen her husband root through a box behind the east panel screen. And sure enough, that's where the lanterns were, collapsed into flat round discs and stacked vertically like held keys in a record shop. Okay, she said again, pointing to the box. Fantastic, Jake said. One, two, three, come. Huh? She's asking if you want one, two, or three, Martha said. Come on, Jake, I'm tired. Let's get it and go. Inyo looked twice through the box to make sure, but unfortunately it was the only side that didn't have its son. No twelve, she said. No problem, Jake said. Thanks so much for looking. Maybe when you get them in again, you can let me know. Our restaurant is at the end of... Christ, Jake, Martha said, cutting him off. She hardly understands anything. Can't you see? The woman was obviously running out of patience. Without another word, Martha turned and stormed out of the store. Sorry about that, Jake said. I think it's a hormone. But wait a minute, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. They walked back toward the front of the store together, and yelled quickly her steps to keep up with Jake's gate. The only word she heard for sure was sorry, but she knew what he meant. He was apologizing for the way his wife was acting, which was probably something he did off. Thank you again. Okay, she said. She watched him go, hoping he'd duck past the stream of wind chimes he was walking toward. But no, he ran right into them and flooded the store with a chorus of metallic tinkling. Whoops, he said. And when he turned back as large as he was, he looked like a little boy had done something wrong. Okay, she told him for the fourth time, wishing she could say something other than that stupid word. But he waved and she waved, and that was the end of their encounter because her husband and her two kids were sauntering back, each with an ice cream cone in hand. Did we miss any excitement while we were gone? Her husband asked. For a moment she considered telling him what happened. No, she said.